five. <clears throat> oh, James, a quick question to you. Uh, does James mind showing um, work in progress on the miniatures? <clears throat> Uh, James Baldwin. Yeah, James is quite a question. Oh, I don't see that one. Well, um, does James mind? Well, I don't know. Um, no, no, I can't remember. He's not released yet. Okay. Uh, uh, James Baldwin. Yeah. Only yeah. stuff that's been released, mate. Um, um, does James I'm sure you probably well, get yeah. away with it, but no, I don't think you're going to show anything now. No, 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 no. I'm not even going to show anything now. So, I think that we're online now. Excellent. <laughs> that's the only thing. <laughs> Did you say there's no problem with the beat? I'll try to solve this somehow, Jesus. Yeah, well. Can you can you move your mouse or something? Yes. I just want to check the the lag. Okay, so nothing's happening on YouTube. Oh yeah, that like okay, it's like like five to ten seconds lag. Well, that's, that's okay. 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 That, that, that's now let me let me try something else. Okay. Okay. So this is it. Just rotating it for you. Let's see what happened now. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if. Let, let, let me ask people here on chat. Uh, yeah. Can you hear us? <coughs> oh, that's the best way to test it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no one is answering. <laughs> Which is a bad sign. <laughs> okay. <coughs> now let me try this. When after doing this sculpt, I realised that um, I actually didn't fill the neck in, so there's, <laughs> big, <laughs> there's, there's a, a big bit of like low res mesh. Yeah. Oh, yeah some, someone there. said uh, yes, loud and clear. Okay. Okay, okay oh. so we have 10 more minutes. Uh, don't say anything dumb because you're on air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to make myself some coffee and we'll continue like uh, 8 o'clock so you know like yeah. not a problem so <laughs> avoid <laughs> avoid putting uh, putting on you know some uh, additional uh, uh, channels <laughs> <laughs> yeah we weren't going to do that anyway but now you said it i've been warned off yeah okay great right. so <laughs> you're on air you know we'll just uh, okay. wait a bit uh, i think we have like 13 people watching i guess that will reach at least 20 you know uh, okay but, yeah. uh, so, yeah, so we're online, uh, and the session has started, but this is the unofficial part, so <laughs> uh, I'll be back in three minutes. Okay, no worries. Yeah, I, I noticed this bit, and as I was dynamashing and putting it together, I was like, what is that? <laughs> I was like, is that, does that, did I do that on purpose? And of course, no. I just got focused, and but I got all the way through to the end of the. Um, Do you still see triangles? No. Oh, you can. I mean, you can subdivide it, and it's not a problem. But yeah, I don't know what that is. His neck. <laughs> Super professional, James. Super professional. Um, I think I just moved it out in the end. But, um, it's it's an Easter egg. <laughs> it's an Easter egg. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I didn't. I'm not particularly happy with his band around his head. I think I, I um, there was too much. Um, I, put, I, I added too much um, of a gap, uh, too much tolerance to it. So if I could go back, I'd um, I'd redo that a bit. Um, let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. I know. Um, yeah, but sometimes you know, like you, especially if you've got it in print. And then it's con it's like a constant reminder, like you did this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the physical world, you can't stop it anymore. 
Yeah, but I bet you. I, I'm, I'm just, just wondering, wondering if you've ever done that. Forget a forgot pieces. Like a glaring error on on a printed piece. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. For, also forgot to, uh, to put it up in the high subdivision. Oh man, that's a classic. Oh, the big one is um, if you've got it on dynamic subdivision. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then you merge it all, and then of course it switches the, the dynamic subdivisions off, and then you've just got a blocking piece of rubbish <laughs> that you've got that you've got to somehow unmerge and um, subdivide again, and then remerge. Done that a few times, definitely. But that's why um, dynameshing helps, because uh, that's why I don't use booleans. <laughs> You yeah. use booleans. You I use booleans, but you don't like to use booleans. No, I don't. I always, it always takes twice as long. Although you get nicer results, I, um, I think I nearly had the meltdown the last time I used booleans um, for engineering and stuff. <laughs> well, it turned out well, I think. I think so. I hope so. Well, this this is all diamond mesh, so. Um, uh, when I engineered this, which I'll show later, um, I did this all with Dynamesh. But the only problem with that is that you've got to keep everything super high. So every time you merge something, you've got to set the Dynamesh resolution super high. And of course, if you're merging two large pieces together with high, uh, high, with each independently high resolution, mm -hmm. then you're left with a big sort of piece, you know, looking probably at 30, you know, 13, 14 million polygon piece, which um, can be uh, prob problematic if you um, for your display port to show. So. Well, and that's why you just decimate pieces and use boolean to avoid that, this problem. That is the big. I think that is the big the, the big thing. I think if, especially with a hard surface workflow like you, um, it, it, it's indispensable because um, you still get the really crisp details of boolean with when you engineer with booleans um, that you. You, you'd really struggle to get um, with Dynamesh, and then it also with Dynamesh, if you make cuts, you get you kind of get these little ragged edges that are loose polygons sometimes yeah. Yeah. to kind of fix that. Go, go over it with um, Sculptures Pro and kind of fix that. And, um, well, the problem that I had yeah. when I was doing um, like the small rifles or guns for um, Hasbro, yeah, like. Uh, well, while while using Dynamesh, um, like my my edges weren't sh uh, sharp anymore. Yeah. And that's all hard surface, you know. Even even when you project your stuff, like it, it got it didn't go that perfect. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's the before boolean, there the booleans, there wasn't a lot of other options to do it. I wonder how. Hey guys. I think, hello. Hey. Hey. So I've since some guys have reported an echo, so I guess okay. that has to do with uh, are you listening, Are you ha is your YouTube channel open as well? Uh, no. Uh, no. Okay. no. And we have headphones on. Phones? Uh, no. Headphones. Headphones. headphones and, that's, so. and that's all the... All, all, yeah, all that's what you hear, right? Is, uh, yeah. yeah. And we're in, in small rooms as well, we're not in a cabin or anything, so... Like <laughs> well, I'm sitting in my dungeon now, so... <laughs> Actually, knowing you very well now, I wouldn't be surprised. There's a change sort of coming down, and <laughs> skeletons in a oubliette. And... Uh, okay, <laughs> you know what, let me... Let me see... Okay, I'll turn the sound on, on the YouTube channel, just to... Oubliette. And... Uh, yeah, there is, okay. <laughs> you know what, let me... There is a bit of echo. Okay, I'll turn the sound on on the YouTube channel just to check. Uh, yeah, there is a okay. <laughs> you know what? Let I noticed it, it was in the, the other, other feed that you did as well. I think I'll the, the one when I watched the last feed you did, you had a bit of slight echo. echo. It was very it was a very quick echo, there wasn't a lot. You know what? I noticed it was in the other feed that you did as well. I think the the one when I watched the last feed you did, you had a bit of slight echo. It was very it was a very quick echo, there wasn't a lot. I noticed it. Like it's like turning off. Well, I think when I watched the last thing you did, you had a bit of slight echo. It was very, very strange. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this is strange. I, I can't pretend that I'm an expert in live streaming, which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just continue Googling for the rest four minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking now, an oubliette for, for bad clients would be excellent, Martin. Perhaps that's just something you should look into. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to build, uh, buy a little uh, chateau or a little castle in, in the Ardennes. Yeah. In the dark, in the dark forest yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't been to the Ardennes, I think. <laughs> is it that bad? It, it looks beautiful from what I've, I've seen. Yeah. Um, which is very limited. Well, it's beautiful, but it's a bit, uh, let's say, downhill in Belgium. Right. Fair now let's let's try this. Okay, can you please yeah. say a few words? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few words, James. Just a few words. Couldn't be a problem for you. What's that supposed to mean? Uh -huh. Don't start. Don't <laughs> start. <laughs> Yeah, Marco, you better get it sorted, mate, because we're about to have a bust up on air. Oh, it's good now. They say it's good now. It's good. Okay, that's so, all right. So I am, I, am an ex I am an expert in live streaming. <laughs> we'll, we'll, never take you you. we'll take you. No, the thing is that uh, I mean, I usually under pressure. I'm, I, I, I don't uh, have like very straight thoughts, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if if something is burning, uh, I will make it burn even more. But this time, I <laughs> just realized that uh, the the uh, the streaming software was uh, actually uh, also uh, uh, how do you say this? Fuck, my English is screwed. Uh, the desktop, des actually. let's say desktop audio was on. You know. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Which yeah. means yeah. that. Uh, uh, Everything that you were saying was also uh, uh, yeah repeated <laughs> yeah 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 whatever you know you understand yeah all stuck in a matrix so yeah. stuck yeah. in a matrix yeah okay so uh, two minutes to launch okay and yeah, yeah just in time Marco because Martin and I Martin started to have a dig at me and you know oh, it, really it, we're like an old couple you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the? Do you guys remember yeah. the Muppet Show? Yeah. Yes. yes. You remember those those two old farts? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> in the balcony yes. up there. Grumpy old guys. Yep. yep yes. Yep. Yeah. So, that, that's the two of you, I guess. That's the two. Actually, I kind of like that reference. It's kind of cool. I've actually said I mean, we had an, an interview at the at Zebra Summit, and I and I, I I said during that that. When in the mornings, Martin reminds me of Oscar the Grouch. Do you, do you know Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street? Yeah. It's Sesame Street, isn't it? Yeah. The, like the green sort of thing that comes out of the trash can. Yeah, 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 of course. That's kind of the way I see him in is the it, morning. Is it green or purple? No, the cookie it's monster green. was purple. Okay, the okay. cookie monster is like blue, wasn't it? Blue, blue or blue. blue. Or, yeah. yeah um, but yeah, the, the, the Oscar's the sort of the grouchy looking one that comes out of the trash I'm can. I'm not grumpy in the morning. I mean, Okay, so it's uh, it's eight eight uh, uh, p.m. Uh, it's f of course like in every cinema, it's first first is time for commercials. So yeah, well, <laughs> but I'll I'll be the one who's talking first. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is actually. I mean, we did a lot of recordings in the past, and recently I realized. Uh, like all over the YouTube and uh, Vimeo uh, channels that we have, we have already uploaded 100 videos, you know. And uh, but uh, since we never do anything uh, uh <laughs> connected and related to each other, it's really uh, it's really hard to to understand what's ours and uh, and what's not. But I've decided that like in next few months we'll upload all of it to 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 this YouTube channel. And uh, even the YouTube channel is not related to the IFCC. It's like a bo Booner Studio. Uh, anyways, but I will upload all the videos here as well. So, but 
from this new uh, era of uh, videos, uh, this is the second one with two of you. And last, uh, just to remember others, uh, last week uh, we did uh, the one with uh, uh, the fantastic uh, Stephen Corman, uh, which was about his uh, Epic Mate Shot uh, uh, course at the IFCC Academy website, which is also something launched, uh, you know, like recently. And uh, so this is the website uh, we decided to do as uh, an addition to the IFCC festival. So in short, just to inform everyone who is watching now, uh, the idea here is to, you know, gather a professional from around the globe and uh, to uh, convince them to do courses, tutorials and that kind of stuff. And... Uh, the concept here is uh, to offer it at affordable price, so uh, we have given up of any percentage or anything, you know, uh, so everything that's earned goes to the authors of the of those courses, so, and we'll see of course how this works for the next year or two, you know, and if it doesn't work, then <laughs> we'll start <laughs> taking some cuts, you know. But I hope I hope this won't happen and that we'll keep this concept uh, for good. So the first course we launched was the the Stephen Corman's uh, Epic Made Shot co course, and this will this we still have like uh, I think three live sessions left uh, for those who uh, enrolled. And uh, so now we're moving on you guys and uh, before we do I just want to announce uh, the, the next uh, IFCC uh, which will take place in, uh, in Split Croatia. So uh, if you go to the IFCC uh, Croatia website you'll find all the, all the info there and uh, uh, so yes, we to do, for those who have been at the ev event, uh, they know it's happening in Zagreb, Croatia. But this year, we'll we're going to the seaside. Uh, we're going to the to the Split city of Split. So and we're also moving the dates. So usually it was the last week uh, of the uh, January, February, March, April. <laughs> May <laughs> and <laughs> next year it will be June so 24 to 29th of June and our today's guest uh, Martin and uh, James uh, will be joining us there uh, so as one as two of uh, 24 or 25 uh, instructors demo artists so uh, also something I want to say but although we'll have a separate session just about that but uh, uh, we're still working on a schedule it will be kind of a mix you know between workshops and demo sessions you know so uh, so we'll have this main venue which is a bit smaller a lot smaller than the Kino Europa in Zagreb was uh, so all the all the main presentations and whatnot will be happening there and then we also have like some additional classrooms uh, so there'll be like a possibility for our instructors to organize something you know uh, aside from the uh, actual official schedule you know so and, yeah. and some other things and uh, I think that most if not all of the instructors are announced on our website and uh, yeah, we're expecting. We have changed the concept. It's it's a bit different than it was so far. Uh, the reason is um, a lot of new festivals appeared. So back then, when we started, there was only THU industry workshops mm -hmm. uh, and us. I, I I'm not sure who started uh, before us or industry workshops, but uh, I know the THU. Uh, already had I think one or two editions before us so and now they're like 15 I think or 10 or, or, or so and uh, we're all they're all kind of fantastic events with the fantastic <coughs> artists there uh, presenting yeah. and uh, it's really hard for people to you know decide where to go and um, so we just you know we were kind of forced to change our concept you know into yeah. into something new so we'll see how it works in split so uh yeah that being said uh, i'm 
inviting our today's guests to you know uh, uh, you know show themselves <laughs> say who they are and so on you know <laughs> Yeah, I will. I'll introduce myself then. I, I'm James W. Kane. I, I'm a, a digital sculptor. I work in the collectibles industry. Um, I've started sculpting, or digitally sculpting, about four or five years ago, I think. Um, and I've just been basically, well, I started actually in toys. Like, I, I started. Um, uh, with, with working for people like Hasbro and, and people like that, and then I've just moved my way up to larger scale collectibles. And um, yeah, so uh, Martin. Well, yeah, I'm uh, Martin Verhoeven. Uh, I've been sculpting in ZBrush for roughly um, nine years now. And my background is that uh, I studied in my uh, high school education art, and then I went into animation film. Then I was stuck in, let's say, not such a creative job, but uh, I found ZBrush. And my first job started um, sculpting small toys, small guns for um, the G.I. Joe toy line for Hasbro. And from there on, I have done 10,000 different types of projects, going from glasswork to games, assets, to, to uh, concept art for films now. So Great. <laughs> First, <laughs> tell everyone here, tell those kids here, how old are you guys? <laughs> oh, you! Oh. I hate you. I hate That's you. not funny. That's not funny. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, it's um, important. It's be... important for this. Uh, uh, let's call it a debate. Uh, Actually, technically, we're both thirty-nine. So there, there you go. Yeah, technically, yeah, yeah but, <laughs> but but you look much older. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I think this is important because uh, you know, like there are a lot of us who uh, still, you know, like dreaming of their art careers, you know, and uh, to earn their money just by doing art. So, you know, yeah. like for someone who is like 18 or 21, 39 looks like something that's like really far, far away. It's pretty uh, ancient, which, isn't it? Which is, <laughs> which is in theory, you know, but as the yeah. time flies really fast, you know, it's, uh, it's good, you know, to know this, uh, you know, just... yeah. So well, actually, funny enough, Marco, as we were saying to you yesterday, um, I mean, when we were having a chat, we we are we were both late starters, weren't we, Marco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like I was, I was yeah. yeah. I mean, I was a bit young. I was twenty seven when I went back to art school because I, I I was working uh, for a I was actually working for a coffee company in in, in London, um, and I was doing I was working in the warehouse doing their IT and all kinds of stuff, and really, I mean, I failed at uni. I went I went. I have to tell you, we can't, we can't undo this, what you said now, you know, like, uh, so, I think you'll have a talk with the guys in the, in LA next time you go there, so. Um, you know, and 
and uh, and then you just some, in, the, in the end you re you tend to settle and stuff. And I guess that was what happened with me and Zbrush. I find it was what I settled on. Wait, wait, wait! Something, something strange happens here. Yeah. Looks like we've lost the sound for some reason. Just let me see what's going on there. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Ju just a second. Just a second. We have to fix this. You know, like I mean, I I'm expecting this kind of situations to happen. We hear them a tiny bit. They say, "Hmm, let's see what's going on." Here, you haven't lowered down the some lowered down something. Hmm. Okay. Not sure what's what's wrong. Just a second. Uh. Yeah. Well, you know, try say something like one two one two. <laughs> yeah, just a second. I'll, I'll, they say that the, the sound changed when I changed the scene, you know. So let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see if this will do any good. Just a second. <coughs> Although it shouldn't, but um, I mean, it's possible. You can say something now, like uh, whatever. Yeah. Well, I. So, yeah, I mean, um, like I said, we, we, both Martin and I, started. Looks like it's better now. So just, oh, fantastic. Just, uh, yeah, great. Okay. Um, both Martin and I were kind of late starters like that and um, again I was saying to you uh, Marco yesterday that um, uh, in a previous interview I, I've said look um, I think it's I find it really important for me to state that to people that are just starting out too that my path into this has not been flawless like mm -hmm. it's not been like um, effortless or and I think because I, I, I was, all of us have been in that position, right, that where we've been learning and just starting out. And you look at people that are accomplished and you think it's been, you know, they seem so effortless. Everything they do seems so effortless. And um, the reality is that it's not. It's not at all. It's hard, hard one. And there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And it's, I think it's really important to understand that because both Martin and I, I would say, I'm speaking for you, Martin, here, but I think it's true that we live, eat, sleep, breathe sculpting and, and ZBrush, basically. Yeah, yeah for um, That is a requirement, and it's kind of a sacrifice that we make, too. Um, so and it's this, something. Does this mean like eight hours a day, ZBrush? Zebra, more. Zebra, more. More. Yeah, so. More for me. For, me, eight me. Hours. for, for me, you, eight hours. Yeah, hours. You've I, got I, a have, family. I have family. Yeah. So, <laughs> but for so me, I can more. only limit it to eight hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, even then, it's a lot of work. Um, and unfortunately that's what's required of you you know i think i don't think i think some people get by on on, on doing you know what they what they want to do that's fine but um they I, I always think that you know they in life especially because we've got this problem with time at the moment we want more time to do stuff and we just don't have it and you have to give stuff up yeah there's something some things in your life have to go to accommodate other things and for me that was what I had to make. I had to make that choice between TVs and computer games and sculpting. And women. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, okay, you know. No comment. No comment. <laughs> Let's go further on this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, over to you, Martin. <laughs> um, yeah, but it is like that, you know. Um, especially when you're when you're starting to learn. So, like, I think it's important to state that that. Um, that it's not nothing smooth, nothing's easily won or got, uh, and 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 I think we we're, we're both examples of that, really. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I just want to say something. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, like, it's something that I constantly think about. You know, ever since I was a high school kid, you know, like you actually are never aware, maybe until you're a bit older, that. There is no <laughs> like kind of easy way, uh, you know, with arts. It's just like no. a, a lot of hard work, you know. And of course, like in every industry, in every everything, you know, you always maybe not look up to, but you know, you of course you notice those who are like very, very, very successful. But you never think that that's like one in a million, you know. And that's actually not something to you know strive for, you know. Like uh, so, I think. Uh, <laughs> what should be explained to 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 students, you know, like mm. you have to enjoy hard work, you know. Yeah. 
So actually, you have to just enjoy it full stop. You have to enjoy art. If you if you don't enjoy it, there's no point. There's much better careers out there that will pay you more money. That's the reality of it. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's a sobering thought, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, don't, I I think I got to that point with one graphic design. Um, Because after I left uni, I was a graphic designer for a while. And it got to the point where I just wasn't enjoying it. And uh, in the end, what's the point? Um, You know, it's you've got to you've got to be passionate about it and you've got to want to succeed with it. I think that's that's the. Okay, let's uh, ask something. uh, Let's ask Martin something. So yeah, uh, Yeah, and then we'll move on to the ZBrush user Mm -hmm. interface because I know that most of the people are here, you know, uh, dying to know for for (laughs) that, you know, so yeah. yeah. uh, so it's a bit different situation with you, Martin, because uh, you have a kid, one kid or a few of them? Two kids. Two, kids. two kids. So yeah. I guess like you, you can't just plan things like full week ahead, you know, like because uh, of course someone will get sick and then you have to do like night shifts and that kind of stuff. So uh, or is someone like replacing you 100%, you know, when, when, when this situation? No, comes? no, no. Like the, the how I try to schedule or plan any, everything, like my wife um, does way more hours than me. She's a TV, TV producer. And uh, the thing is, like, uh, my working day starts when I drop off the kids, and then I work like a maniac until I can pick up the kids again. I cook. (laughs) (laughs) I I just wait until my wife gets home, then maybe we eat together or not, and after that, uh, me or her put the kids to bed, and then we work for a few more hours in the evening. And that's roughly how it goes every day, roughly. Yeah, it's very similar here with me. (laughs) <laughs> the only difference is that when I come home at like four or five o'clock with my kid from the that I picked from kin- kindergarten, <laughs> it happens that my wife's mother is there cooking something, you know. Which okay, okay, okay. <laughs> which really helps a lot, you know. So. Can you imagine coming home and Martin's doing the cooking? I just can't picture it. He's got one of those really awkward aprons on with a sort of naked man on or something. I don't know. Just... Yeah. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, okay. Let, now let's let's move to you know our yes. favorite software. You know, although recently I'm I'm, I'm calling like the Blender to be my favorite software. But really, uh, okay. Uh, you know, only in ZBrush I get uh, that strange feeling. You know that I don't want to uh, uh, leave the user interface. You know, when I'm, <laughs> you know, just, just wasting time like uh, pushing. Uh, polygons uh, on a sphere it's, you know like for it's hours not, yeah it's not for everyone is it i mean it, there, it is there is a big steep learning learning curve yeah i mean for me it was different because uh when i was a kid i for the first software i opened was i, I think cinema 4d which is yeah. kind of i don't know back then but now it's like one of the easiest softwares to 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 learn you know mm. but back then I, I just opened it you know I, I, <laughs> I didn't understand shit you know and it just closed you know <laughs> And then uh, when I when I got ZBrush, <laughs> also uh, <laughs> a strange copy of ZBrush uh, appeared on my computer. Uh, <laughs> then uh, I I you know like uh, started doing something, but I didn't understand anything about polygons, of course, and, and, and what they are and, and so on. <laughs> but I was cocky enough to send an email to Pixelogic and uh, to ask their founder to give me like the original copy, and uh, <laughs> and fact was that he did offer to do it, you know. But that was like I don't know, like 15 years ago, or, or what. Right. and he did offer me uh, a, a copy. But if I improve, you know, the work, you know, that I was sending him, you know, the the stuff because it, obviously it was a total crap, you know. And I said, like, of course, yeah, I'll do it, you know. And of course, I never did it, you know. But in the <laughs> end, in the end, I did buy the the, the the license because it really pays off, you know. But um, okay, let's talk about Z tools, uh, you know, like Dynamesh, uh, uh, clay, po- you clay polish. polish let's talk about kind of Oh no, not booleans, the dreaded booleans. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I thought really what I'd do to help explain that, Marco, is I'd go through the process of um, one of the um, models that I've recently, or sculptures I've, I, I made last year. Um, and this was for Monster Palooza. We, we went to Monster Palooza in April, um, and this was one of the busts I made to, to, to do that, to go there with. Um, and. Uh, so there, there was a. This is a, a good example of 
I mean, it's a, it's a very, I guess in some ways it's a very simple bust in terms of composition. Um, but this, this went from, from sculpt to, um, uh, sculpt to, to engineering and then into print. So this was actually printed out and then cast. Um, and actually we, we, uh, we are actually, um, selling these as well on that. I should do, do a little, um, <laughs> do a little advert there, but I, yeah, we, we are in a group called Grim and you can, uh, find these, uh, on the, on our website from, uh, we are I'm sure Marco will put that up on the feed later um 200 so, yeah. euros for promotions <laughs> <laughs> damn damn um yeah so i mean that, that was the purpose of this so i think i thought what would be nice is if um I, I went through the process and so in that process i can actually explain some of the stuff that's going on as well whatever you want to know marco basically um so i'll show you i think it's always interesting like showing people how i start because mm -hmm. Like everyone, no matter what you're doing in art, everyone has that white paper syndrome, don't they? Like it's like you you're staring in front of the screen, thinking, "Well, how do I start?" Um, I guess the and this is this is my first. These are my first sort of uh, my first strokes, shall we say? Um, but I guess before this comes the research, and I'm, I've done a lot of. Um, before this stage, I've done a lot of research on the character and all that sort of stuff. And <laughs> so are, this should be like an Orin Guten or something like that? <laughs> well, it's just place. It's getting something down, actually. You know, it's weird. At art school, I learned that. You, know, you, you get something on the paper and then you've, you've lost that kind of um, preciousness about it, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, that's the that's the the worst thing it's the worst thing every artist knows that feeling um but, but yeah like i say before this i've done some research i know roughly what i want to do what the idea is the core of the idea um i guess some people sketch as well um i'm starting to do that again pick it up but mostly it's um just getting a good folder of reference really um, and just making a start from there so yeah this is basically how i would start something and then just let us yeah know this uh, so this skull we see here you know this yeah is this like yeah. a rough sculpt that you do like or you have this skull uh, in your library somewhere you know this was a skull that i think i uh was i think actually this might even be ryan kingsland's skull mm -hmm. okay so let me try and find it for you it's under the tool palette yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay yeah i mean so like, it's there okay so it's yeah so it's part of the skeleton and I literally just cropped it out and then used it. Um, actually, funny enough, I, I, I don't I don't do that a lot. Um, I tend to sculpt from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, because I was trying to knock out quite a few sculpts in a row for Monster Palooza, then I chose to to start with something um, and be a bit lazy. Um, I don't think. <laughs> Stop laughing. I, I don't. I don't um, think there's anything wrong with that, actually. Um, but I do try and start from scratch if possible, because I always like to try and, especially in personal work, because I always like, I always try and learn something every time. And if you start with something that's already there, um, then you kind of minimise that, unless you want to move quickly forward into something else that you want to learn, I guess. But for me, it's all about anatomy and improving. Um, and I don't get that with uh, when I start with someone else's stuff. Um, so that's that's the reasons. But yeah, in this case, I've I've stolen a skull from another sculpt, and I've used it to start. And then um, I will if it stops auto saving. Um, yeah, fun enough, I actually I don't doesn't look like I've dynameshed it. I don't know exactly what I've done. I think I just started with it, and then uh, I'm just using the um, so I'm going to the brush palette, and then. Um, I've got I've got my shortcut keys, but I'm just this clay build up that I'll use first, um, and then I'll just go in and just sketch stuff out using the clay build up brush, um, and then smoothing it out. So this is your favorite brush for adding like volume, I think so. like big chunks yeah. of clay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and yeah, basically you're sketching. Actually, so, some of my traditional sculptor friends always say it's like sketching in 3d like because actually you're only you're sketching on a flat screen so you're not actually sculpting um so it's kind of a bit it's a weird kind of hybrid i guess in some ways um but yeah so that's basically what i'm doing i'm just sketching it out i'll flesh out the um the forms i'm just searching for forms at the moment really um and then so i'm trying to, i'm getting a bit too detailed but 
Um, and then I'm just looking for main forms. Um, when, I mean, normally, this, well, actually now this sculpture is pro, so where you can see the mesh is not very dense here, if I sculpt on it without Sculptris Pro, you can see it, it just distorts, right? Um, but with Sculptris Pro, if I've got that switched on, then it's resolute. Oh, I've it's actually got um, some uh, subdivisions, so if I delete those, um, you can see that it tessellates um, dynamically. Mm -hmm. So I can, um, in the old days, you'd have to dynamesh everything, but now yeah. you can actually sculpt straight on a, a quite a low res mesh, and you can see actually tessellates everything done i think that for a long time the uh, uh, i mean since they uh, uh acquired the uh, sculptor's uh, software from its original uh, author uh yeah they did in uh, implement the zbrush bridge inside it but not many people have used it you know actually not many people have i didn't used realize that there was yeah, bridge. yeah you have like yeah you wow have like a, so basically you could do the same thing you know it was a click yeah. click away you know but yeah. uh, not many people have used it, those hardcore ZBrush users anyway. So Well, when, when we did, because we, we did the beta last year, and when they showed us this, we were like, wow, this is like yeah. everything we wanted. You know, because it, it's different when everything yeah. is in, when everything's kind of in, in reach, uh, and you can do everything on the fly. Because um, you could do most of this stuff with Dynamesh, um, but it's just not the same. Um, as just this, as being able to do it dynamically and sketch on, like I'm doing now, sketch out the forms and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so there's an old thing with 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 sketching like this as a little tip um, when you're when you're doing forms like this. And I'm doing, I'm not really sculpting properly here, I guess, but um, is is when you're when you're creating large forms. So I'm going to just create uh, this part of the the forehead um, is to sculpt across it like that, and then. So you get a nice sort of volume and then sculpt across it like that. And then you'll get a nice volume when it's smoothed out. You'll get some nice forms. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the main way that I would sculpt and build up forms on a, on a sculpt like this. Mm -hmm. Notice I'm also um, sculpting asymmetrically. I mean, most of the time, well, I might show you later, but <clears throat> most of the time um, I... At the very early stage, I'll still use symmetry to build up a face because I think you need the volume, you need the right sort of, um, you, you need the right proportions, and uh, and symmetry really helps you do that. But I try and turn it off as soon as I can. And of course, in this case, I actually already had the symmetry because I added the skull, which was roughly symmetrical. Um, so I've already got like the template to work on, uh, and I've found that as I've gone on that as long as I've got the proportion right, the actual symmetry doesn't matter mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of weaned myself off symmetry. Um, so yeah, at the moment, at this stage of the sculpt, I'd be kind of building up forms, um, trying to, I'm searching really as well. Um, I think in the end, as you'll see when I move on, that um, I kind of came up with like this mummified version mm -hmm. of the sculpt. Um, so I mean, th th this character that you're doing—it's actually something more of like stylized. Uh, you're not after like uh, any hyperrealism or, or anything. No, it's, I'm not interested it's more like in an, that. At like all. Yeah. illustration, you know. Like we can compare it yeah. to like il just li illustration of uh, for for certain. Purposes. I think so. Yeah. It's funny because that's actually what I did before I did all this is illustration. So I have that when I when I do stuff, I have that mindset, and I'm not. Uh, I, of course, I'm not bashing photorealism at all. I think, um, I, I've, well, in fact, if anything, I admire it. But it's not what I personally search for in my work. Yes. I'm looking for, actually, I think the key for me is is story and gesture. Mm -hmm. If I can get those two things in my work, I'm happy. And photorealism, yeah. Um, sometimes in 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 uh, it's demanded in. Um, commercial work I do but that's actually rare as well as I've built my portfolio up I'm known for my less photorealistic things and so that's what people want I think this is what you well. said is uh, very important uh, I know that I'm interrupting uh, your uh, uh, no, it's fine. sculpting and, and tips and tricks and I know that some of the guys will hate me for this but uh, <laughs> I uh, because you said gesture you know and uh, uh, I remember because just recently I've been uh, listening to all the interviews we, we did and one of them was Jama Jurabayev and mm. you know like 
He's also yeah. one of the guys who, you know, yeah. who doesn't care about like uh, you know solving the tiniest detail. He also said like the most important thing, one of the most important things for him is just to get the the gesture, you know, to to get the the story with with the gesture, you know, and then. You know, you can move on with details. You know, uh, up in production. You know, to to you know, like make everything perfect and polished and so on. But uh, and this is something I myself also like very often forget. I, I I start designing a character and then I realize I'm just like drawing it in like in some A or T pose. You know, and uh, while if I would you know like put it in a in, in a certain position, you know, some action position from the beginning. It would be a much better effect, you know, uh, even when it's yeah. it's when yeah. it's half done, you know, because you you would have story right away. So even it's funny, Marco. Even the best, if you look at some of the best um, realistic sculptors out there. Um, well, let's okay, Martin. Let's use our, our good friend Vimal Vimal Coqueta. Yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> let's like, use he, him. Yeah, let's use him. He won't mind. Um, <laughs> Even he, t although he sculpts very realistically, and that's what he's known for, even he tells a story in his work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a story behind every piece and in, a, in every face. And that's the key, I think. In, 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 and it's, uni it's a universal thing, Mark. You know, it really the, is. The funny thing is that your colleague who is here with us, <laughs> because <laughs> he can't get to speak because we're speaking too much, especially me, uh, <laughs> he's, he's doing the opposite. You know, like uh, a, a lot of his works are static, but his yeah. characters are kind of iconic, you know, like, uh, you know, yeah. I, I can picture them in some temple or whatever, you know, so yeah. they don't yeah. have to move because uh, he already did a lot with the, with the design, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's strange. Yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting to, to discuss this, definitely. Yeah, I think so. I think it's what we, I think both of us tend to focus on that. And our, and our colleague Brett as well, who's part of Grimm as well. I mean, we we tend to focus more on the idea and the story behind the piece over the techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that that's really important to us um, because at the end of the day, if you remove, you've got to be able to still have something there. If you remove the layers of software, um, technique, all of that, if you can remove all of those and still have a core of an idea afterwards, then I think I believe that that's something worthwhile. Um, okay, before you continue with the sculpt yeah. and tips yeah. and tricks, uh, yeah. I like interrupting. No, that's I know, fine. I know people hate yeah. it. I hate it when others host to do it. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, Zebra Summit, you were there, both of you. Yes. Uh, yes. If I remember correctly, Martin, you won a award, right? Oh, don't don't encourage him. <laughs> And you have yes, them. yes, yes, yes. You remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, were you nervous, guys? There. I mean, it was like going to some kind of Olympics, you know, like uh, ZBrush Olympics. You know, like, <laughs> were you nervous? Were you, you know, like, uh, what, what, like, are you? Were you totally relaxed? You know, when you you seen all the guys that you know from the internet well, and so on. I, w I would tell you honestly, my 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 thing about the whole thing, like, um, I was only nervous ten minutes before let's say the the clock started mm -hmm. like i needed some time alone <laughs> because everyone's stressing out like it doesn't matter how good you are in 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 your field like everyone in that room is stressing out at that moment so i was stressing out for 10 minutes i just uh looked up my playlist on my on my phone put on some music and after let's say five ten minutes i was like in such a fun zone because i was just sculpting and having fun and and I was, yeah, strangely having too much fun. I thought because when I was looking left from me and right from me, I saw like people scratching on their Wacom's and Cintiqs like crazy, like their life depended on it. it was like, oh yeah, shit, should also be <laughs> should also be like doing this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then you look over your shoulder and then you see somebody like opening Photoshop already, and you're like, um, mm, yeah, maybe I should step up. Um, but yeah. yeah um, in the end, it's it's a great experience to to be part of, you know, like um, the whole is, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's um, I think there were a few 
um, people uh, that, that 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 we know that were saying that yeah, you shouldn't really have any competitive, you know, competitive stuff spoils the atmosphere. But actually, I would say I would say to that that um, it doesn't really feel like that. I never really felt no. intimidated by any of the other artists, particularly. Like we all we all hang out as well during the summit, and um, doesn't matter what level you are, what you know, everyone. It's not like we're not all holding hands singing kumbaya but i mean it's like we're, we're <laughs> it's not that nice but um, i mean um you know we we're all the we're all just artists and like yeah, we know no there's no snobbery like there, it's a real level of the summit i find you know like you can approach anyone um and uh you know some of these great big artists that have got names and stuff you can cheat talk to them like any other person and that's what's so cool about it you know martin is that in any way similar to the IFCC experience uh, since you have been here in, in Zagreb? Like, what, what's the difference? Uh, uh, the biggest difference is that, um, let's say, ZBrush, most of the, the ZBrush artists know each other mm -hmm. because it's like, it's like software focused, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and you always have like that thing to talk about and, and, and um, that's, that's great, but it's to be honest, like when you go to the to the summit, it's more of a vacation and catching up with colleagues. Mm -hmm. And when you go to IFCC, it's like discovering also new artists. Mm -hmm. Like when I go to to the summit, I don't expect to discover new artists. I I, I meet new people, but I I already know their work, you know. Like, but IFCC is like more like oh, you see somebody presenting something, and you you're you're like it's 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 more of a mixed bag, like mm -hmm. having 2D and 3D. And yeah, it's it's okay. So summit is more like a, uh, like a, you can say like a, uh, for ZBrush uh, you, artists like professional, you know, like a pro uh, the conference of uh, that gathers professionals around a certain topic, which is ZBrush in this case. And uh, uh, but you know, do you do you but have even a students? Yeah, even students. Do you have a chance to talk about uh, some? maybe some future clients there or uh, discuss some business things, you know? Uh. Uh, not really. Uh, not really, no. I think, um, I mean, we, we've we met clients there last year mm -hmm. um, that we, but, but we were already in touch with them. Um, and that's something that we found with Monster Palooza, actually, that we mm -hmm. were able to meet some clients there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and people in the industry as well and and it's it although it is a small industry it's also in some ways very big as well and that or i should say big but very broad there's pete there's digital sculptors there's vfx people there's game mm -hmm. there's ga people that make games and so um, we all we all have a like a common purpose and we all have i guess a lot of us have zbrush in common but also a lot of other apps and there's a lot of cross pollination there and but you'll find that certain events are more focused on on certain mm -hmm. e elements of that um and so there's a lot of people to meet and and see and it's kind of um although it is a small industry relatively it's nice to know that you know that there's there's always someone new to me there's always someone you know and someone that would broaden your horizons either as a client or as a friend or as just a fellow artist you know um that's what i love about this industry it's 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 great like that okay enough about conferences now let's just focus <laughs> on zbrush uh what yeah. were you doing in p past like five minutes uh this <laughs> mustache like uh, w w what was the deal there like we see like uh, you you extruded some tiny bits. Uh, yeah, so this is a lot of people ask how I do hair yeah. and stuff, and how do actually, you? I would say how do I? Do? Um, <laughs> I, I would say it's the same as any other sort of sculpting, and that you build up some form first, yeah. like so you build up shape and some flow, and then you so and then you move basically from large to small. So I'm just building up some shape and just getting a a nice idea of the flow in my head. So um, we'll, so we'll still we're we're still using clay build up as the main. That's thing, right. right. Yeah, yeah. We're using clay build up. But then I've I've used um sorry I see a whack on thing. Um, then I'm using the move brush as well to move bits out. Funny enough, the move brush doesn't work with sculptress. So you'll get that this kind of um. But the, a little trick to do is, as you can see, if I move stuff out, you can see it's starting to stretch. Mm -hmm. You can see the polygons are starting to stretch. A little another little tip is um. Although I've got my move brush selected, when I if I've got 
if I've had a previous brush with Sculptures Pro mode switched on and then I go switch back to the Move brush, you'll notice that you still have Sculptures Pro switched on on the Smooth brush. Mm -hmm. um, so it, even though it hasn't, it's stretching, I can smooth it out and it will tessellate using the Smooth brush. So this way you can move and smooth, which is what I call it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a bit cheesy. But, um, yeah. <laughs> you can see where it's, uh, it's you can, stretched out. You can out. smooth. <laughs> smooth and move. Um, yeah, so, and then sometimes I'll attack it with the, if I'm doing a really curly moustache, um, I use a spiral tool. So if, if I can, mm -hmm. and you can actually get different effects by holding down the alt key. So oh, really? I can with a spiral of, tool? Mm. Yeah, a little, and just use the edge of it. And then you'll just get this this nice. I mean, it takes a bit of practice, and sometimes I'll do a lot of undos to get the right effect. But um, yeah, this guy's got a very curly moustache. Um, but even even here, you can just like add a hint of twist in some of these parts of the beard and then of the moustache, and, and it kind of gives that wavy look. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, what I've done with this now is I've built up a rough form. Uh, and it's given me some ideas of where the depths are and where, what I can focus on. So I'd now attack it with the Damien standard brush. Mm -hmm. um, this is to make these bits Just, deep. Okay, to emphasize, uh, like... Yeah, uh, that's right. Okay, so Damien. Uh, <laughs> You're taking notes, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just, uh, um, when I, whenever I use Damien standard, I always ask myself, you know, like, did I pay this guy properly, you know? Because I think that he did for mark for zebra marketing of ZBrush as much as <laughs> their marketing team did. I mean, I'm joking, but uh, like oh, he was at the summit. Okay. Yeah, he was at I the know, summit with us. He seemed quite happy. So yeah, were <laughs> 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 he got paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, he, like uh, I don't know anyone who who is not using the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I must say it was. It is still one of my key brushes to, to do stuff with um it, it's just great it just it does everything you want it to do that little bit of pinch funny enough and hopefully damien's not listening but i've moved on to the slash brush a bit as well actually <laughs> and certain stuff so hopefully he's not taking that <laughs> it's not too upset with me but yeah i i am um, I, I moved on a bit to the slash brush because what that can do if i activate it now is it gives you some really nice deep camera uh, orientated mm. depth. Mm -hmm. so, show the Xeon. Then, show the Xeon. That's a good one. The Xeon cutter. Yeah, yeah. Which is Martin's brush. Oh really? Yeah, shh, that's a big shh. secret. Nobody knows. Oh well, it's out. The, the cat's out the bag now, mate. Um, and what well, the Xeon cutter brush? It pinches and it raises. Look, so you get this nice, and it's great for like. And if I push all, I can. And yeah, Martin loves it. I can't actually get on with it very well. I must admit. It's great. It's, it's, great, it's great for blocking in uh, anatomy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in this context, I would say I'll use a slash brush because what I want to try and do is, and this is, as you say, Marco, quite. Wait, when was this brush uh, published? The Zenith. The slash brush or the Xeon cutter? Xeon cutter. Um, it should be on there, actually. Um, no, it doesn't have it. Um, I don't know who's who, who created Martin. You know, you might know. I don't know. Is I'll this Google like uh, on, a, on the default list of brushes? No, 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 no. no. You have to go to folders, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not even a folder. So oh, you have really? to download yeah. it for some. Oh no, you have to download it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Wait, I'll quickly try to find and Google it to give honor to the artist. Yes, uh, definitely need to do that. Yeah. You can paste it in a chat. Uh, okay. There in the YouTube channel, if you if you if you have it open. So I'm just going to switch some lady right, lady right uh, Lazy. <laughs> I'm switch some lady. Listen, don't start talking about spelling mistakes, Marco. All right. Uh, um, la lazy radius. I'm going to switch some la switch lazy. Some lady. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, that's going to control my stroke a little bit better because it, uh, without it sort sort of switched on, it, you can sort of get a wobble. It can't. You, if your hand wobbles, you, you can get a kind of a wobbly line. So if you just switch it on and turn it up. Now I've got that in my UI, but it's like you can find that under stroke and lazy mouse here mm -hmm. on the menus. Um, so anyway, as you can see, I'm building up volume and then I'm I'm cutting into the mesh. I'm creating some nice curvy, swathy lines. Um, yeah. So and all this, uh, like, 
let's just go back a few minutes. Uh, all this is without any drawing reference or whatever. This no, is just no, you, like, more. experimenting, I'm, I'm like exploring. exploring. I'm exploring. This. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me move on because um, we. Could, I guess you guys could watch me all, all day, and I get. I might want to go too. So um, I'll um, I'll move on and show you a bit yeah, further okay. the process because uh, okay. the trouble is I end up noodling as well. Um, so really, um, I'm I, I've done roughly. Of course, I, I actually noodled a bit there, and I went too far into the sculpt. Um, at, the, at this stage of the sculpt, I'm still trying to get an idea for the composition. So as you can see, I'm adding more bits. I've added the helmet. I modelled the helmet there. Um, that was modelled with Z Modeler, um, and I've just literally uh, created a. I think actually, I, I, I took a sphere, cut it in half, mm -hmm. and then just pulled, pulled stuff out, and then used Z Modeler to create these uh, edges. Um, okay, and, I have to stop yeah. you again. Sorry, yeah. everyone. But I, I want to know, like, uh, where did you come up with these designs? Is this some? Are these like based on some old uh, footage illustrations or whatever? No. Uh, um. I, I, well, in my personal work these days, I try to come up with original ideas out of my own head. Saying that, <laughs> the stuff I'm working on at the moment is based off a, a well-known painting, but. Mm -hmm. um, I try and have my own take on stuff and not try I don't I try not to this is not knocking anyone who uses con other people's no, concepts. No, no. What, what um, I'm trying but to say I, is like yeah. uh, I mean this to me this looks yeah. familiar not not in a way oh, of, good. of other people work but you know it has elements like I see this yeah. helmet it can be like yeah, I don't know sorry. like some yeah. British helmet the, the the sign looks like uh, uh, like like the one that Italian uh, guard this, or this is a this is an Adrian helmet so okay. that's well, so, as I, as I said, when we first started, um, I, I do, I've got a big folder of reference mm -hmm. that I've built up. So I actually did a lot of ref re research on French soldiers. I mean, the idea of this piece is Bluebeard, so it's my take on Bluebeard. So I've made Bluebeard like a French soldier, like a mummified French soldier with the souls of his victims in the beard, um, which is my the, the, my my concept. Um, so the, I, and this is what I try and do I try and come up with my own concepts um, but of course there's a lot of historical reference and of course you know you need to use photos for that to get it accurate and and that's where actually that's why I say it was good with, that you recognized it because that's part of it you need yeah, to bring yeah. Th th that's really important because it, it's yeah. somewhere in the back of your mind you know and yeah. you, you identify yourself with it and that's actually adds you know to the to the design you know so uh it's perfect, I, I think. So, yeah, please continue. Yeah. Sorry. No problem at all. Um, so I'm going to go through... I've done some sculpting now, but I'm going to go through the, the general process. Um, you guys keep cutting out, so just let me know if um, you can still hear me. Um, still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the, I mean, I'm just searching, trying to find a nice composition, trying to... Again, I'm, I'm just searching, really, for, for something. Uh, and so I'll move on again, and I know it's a big leap, but this is when, at uh, kind of this point, I'm thinking, yeah, what I'm doing is right, and now I'm going to go into the more detailed stuff. So actually, here you can see I've done a lot of work on the beard, um, and then I've got the, the face sketched in, um, and then I've got all the details on, I'm starting to look at the, the, the main features of the helmet, um, I've got the back blocked in too. Um, I've got the straps blocked in. So this is very close to my final design. And then now it's just a case of, to, in my head, actually, I'm over the hump. I'm over the, the, the problem of solving the design here. And now I'm moving into the technique of sculpting and getting the, the surfaces looking nice and going into the bit more of the detail of the sculpt. Um, Okay, if we analyze uh, these elements here, like uh, mm. yeah. uh, the backpack behind uh, the blanket mm. or whatever it is, and then the the arms, so these are mm. like these are just like uh, basic uh, geometrical shapes in zebras, like uh, yeah. uh, what are they called? Uh, these are cylinders, actually. Yeah. And I've just moved, I've used the move brush okay, so. to um, to move them about and then smooth them out and at the edges and yeah. I mean, so I, um, I think. That this what we see now is like very very important because uh, you know I know a lot of artists uh, who are not maybe working professionally in some studio where there's no one to you know guide them or whatever 
yeah would kind of stuck you know like because you know they would do the head you know yeah and they they, yeah. they would move to the to the to the other parts of the of the body mm-hmm. and they were stuck you know they were like you know okay so how do i now now do the the the, the torso you know and and the arms and what you, with just with the move brush and the cylinders and the or, or sphere you can really do a lot because this when yeah. you look at this this yeah. is almost you know all, all that's left is adding details here it, that's exactly what i'm saying yeah exactly i mean it's literally get so in any i i firmly believe like after doing three years of art school i think it was confirmed in my head as well that most forms of art that you're that you work on if even if it's an idea if it's just an idea or um if you're doing something very technical you start small and you end big in that you in and in, in terms of this i start big and end small in terms of detail right so i'm starting to uh, get the block in the shapes those shapes inform everything so um it, it, it's really important to get them right and spend that time to get them right. Otherwise, if you move, and it's quite a common thing that we see in a lot of students, Martin, don't we? That that um, you, they move on too quick to from the, the the blocking in stage, and then they're all of a sudden they're in the very very minute de- de- detail. In fact, if I was to be critical of myself, I even did it just then when I first because I was focusing on the eyes when I was sculpting, and of course, um, if you know looking through these stages that I've laid out for myself i moved I, I didn't actually focus on the eyes until much later in the skull because i was more interested in getting all this stuff blocked how, in how how many hours uh, uh, are invested in this what we see here at this stage, I, at this stage i think at this stage i think we're looking about a week's work perhaps mm-hmm um something around that i always mm-hmm. find it difficult to to especially with personal work because you end up losing yourself in it a little mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. and you're not really sort of paying much attention to time but i think i did this whole thing from sculpt to render in about probably two weeks three weeks something like that I, on and off in my spare time because i of course i had other work going on in the background too we have one question so yeah I, i'm not sure this is also one very super amazing talented guy called okay right Vero yeah. Gallo. you will find him on uh, on facebook he and instagram he does amazing stuff so yeah. he asks like uh if i understand it correctly you know uh he, he can write another one later on if i did a mistake here so yeah. if, if there's something that you get like a, a job and uh, you know something that you hate to sculpt you know like uh uh, is this like a headache for you, you know, or like uh, uh, you just concentrate and, and, and do it as fast as possible, you know, or or this will be like, uh, you know, uh, extended work hours for you just because you don't like the topic? Um, how, how do you mean? So if I get a commission work? Yeah, if for I get example, commission work? if I got it yeah. right uh, from his question. So. so so I guess the question is, do I enjoy commission work? Yeah, w- will, probably, this take, yeah. Uh, will this take m- yeah. much longer for you to do if it's something that you don't like? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah gotcha. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. That is actually quite a simple answer. Yeah, I guess so. I, um, actually, this is where someone else asked me that actually today, I think, or, or yesterday. You know, how, how do you keep doing stuff without burning out? And I guess the answer is, Marco, you've got to have the interest. So this is what we were saying at the start. You, It's not for the faint of heart, really. And at the end of the day, you are working, you are doing stuff, and you, you, in every single job you under the sun, there's stuff that you just don't want to do. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, I mean, and uh, it's the same what we do. Well, you know? the, the cool thing um, with the cool thing with sculpting and maybe with, with drawing as well is even if uh, even if uh, the the project itself, uh, you know, like uh, the topic kind of sucks, you know, uh, it's still you can still like watch it as a as some kind of a technical achievement, you know, mm, like to yeah. Uh, to yeah. do it good you know so yeah yeah exactly i mean i think you i think you can enjoy elements of it um i would <laughs> let's put it out there in case any potential clients are look watching <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you like I, it all the I would never rush a job i would never try and rush a job but yeah there are st- stages of some client work especially for me engineering that are not my cup of tea mm-hmm. uh, and that and funny enough those are the bits that you really need to concentrate on um, and you just need to learn, you know, you need to build up a tolerance to it, I guess. Okay, let's um, move to the scalp now. Yes, yeah, sorry. We, we um, see some new details here. 
Yeah, so this is the final sculpt. I mean, I'm 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 darting about quite a lot, but I wanted to show you guys how the what the print print model looked like as well, mm-hmm. because that's a stage in this process. Um, and yeah, so this is the final uh, model with all the details. Um, as you can see, it's very very detailed, um, and I've actually used. Uh, I've, there's there's the faces and the beard and now these this is interesting because I sculpted these <laughs> individually and then put them in the beard and then moved them about so mm-hmm. if they're individual meshes they're <laughs> kind of a bit weird but of course they're covered up by the beard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually sculpted these individually and then then I didn't actually sculpt them into the beard if that makes sense um, I'm not a sadist oh, no, no, <laughs> that gonna... would have taken me a lot longer this has uh, reminded me about uh a painting of uh, the Croatia's famous uh, painter, who is only famous here in Croatia, but uh, <laughs> never mind. But I'll try to find uh, this. Uh, I'll send it to you privately, just to yeah, just cool. Uh, okay. um, yeah. So, uh, well, as you can see, I've done the detail. I'm, I've, I've sculpted in the detail of this the backpack. In fact, it looks like I've decimated that. Yeah, because. Um, in fact, I think I've decimated quite a lot of this because um, as you're sculpting, uh, if you can look down in the corner here, you can see the total points is about 9 million. Um, this is to keep things faster. So if, I, if I've if i done something like this rug or rucksack mm-hmm. that um, it's very high res and I want to move on from it, um, sometimes that will be upwards of 6, 7 million polygons. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. and that will really slow down your system, especially if there's no subdivisions, if it's just purely dynameshed. Mm-hmm. So the best way to, that I find is to is to um, uh, basically decimate it. So the, um, we see here, like, uh, you have, like, if I see it correctly, you applied <coughs> some surface noise, right? Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, this is standard noise from mm-hmm. Noisemaker, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But on here, uh, this is, th- again, this is decimated. Okay, but, so, um, yeah. You can see from a dist. I mean, all I care about is w- what it looks like from this distance. Mm-hmm. So, which is it's, it's fine. And I think again, I use the noise maker, mm-hmm. standard noise maker, mm-hmm. to create these kind of so um, w- raised textures. What's interesting with your sculpt that is that like you, you from the start you've been treating these belts and, and, and other elements as separate uh, uh, mm. meshes right from the start. That's right. While yeah. Uh, yeah. Some, some others might just extract from the uh, from the from the you know like from the jacket they would yeah. uh, uh, yeah. kind of cut the poly group and then extract it you know so okay yeah. it's it's yeah. fine to see like uh, you know like different approach uh, to solving things what I what I actually do these days is I'll append in a cylinder mm-hmm. for a strap I'll append in the cylinder and then uh, the problem with that is that you'll get all of these um, edges which you don't want so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a, I've got it in my UI. I just click delete loops, which you'll find, I think, somewhere in the geometry menu. Um, so that's deleted all the loops from that, and I can make it thinner. Mm-hmm. And then if I want to put it as a strap around his shoulders, for example, I just move it into place. Mm-hmm. Um, what's nice about this method, actually, and then you can just move it. So you can just sort of kind of move it down, move it into place. Um, what's nice about this method is actually the inside is filled. And if you're doing print projects, oh, you'll need right. that yeah, field. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're doing anything else, all you've got to do is select the middle, delete it, hidden, yes. and then you've actually got a flat. You've actually got then a strip of um, mm-hmm. geometry, and then you can use the modeler mm-hmm. um, to um, you can to, to just create a, 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 a and flip it, and then you've got a strap again. So there's there's always there's several ways to do it. There's no yeah, that's oh, great right, there's no wrong or right way to do it. It's really great that you can do this in a, in a different uh, ways, you know. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I find that that technique useful when I'm blocking in. So I will have blocked it in using that technique, and then it literally is just a case of moving stuff about until I'm happy with the shape. And if I need to add more detail, then you can just add add edges in, add loops in, and then move it around again until you get the right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the direction, yeah. Um, so uh, do you, I've got other stuff. Do you want me to show other stuff? Or yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> let me just um, yeah. show it all, James. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, do you want me to show the printed version? Because I I did cut. Off. Oh, that's what I'll do. I'll show you. <laughs> Martin's used to it. He's used to it. Um, 
I'm just. <laughs> Martin, I'm just Martin's smoking. wife is looking at him in silence, like, <laughs> like are Martin's you, are there, you done the with the boys' yeah. game, Martin? Well, that's the thing. Like, she really walked in and she was like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" I'm like, "Interview." And she was like, "Okay." <laughs> and then she walked away. <laughs> Because she's probably going to say not not talking with James again. Yeah, yeah. You know, probably. Like, yeah. Um, right. So I just thought this was quite interesting because um, the end the, the the point of this project was a print project, and of course you can focus on the glamorous um, sculpting side, but at the end of the day, we had to make this a printable object, and there is a process to that. I'm going to just I've got other stuff to show as well, but I'm just going to quickly show how we broke down the model, and and part of that is. I mean, the first way you, you, you do this is you merge everything. You start to grab all these bits and merge them together. Um, we do that using Dynamesh. We, we, Martin and I were talking about that earlier on the live stream. Um, the, 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 I guess a lot of people do use Booleans to do that now, which is more accurate way of doing it. Um, it still crashes like anything for me if I do, do it that way, I'm afraid. So I try, try and... I, kind of stick to Dynamesh where possible. Um, but it's just a case of merging all this stuff together. Um, if you look here, you can see where um, these were what individual meshes. They're all part of the same mesh now. Mm -hmm. And it's just a case of going through everything and making, merging it all down, merging these straps in, making sure you've um, filled in all the gaps mm -hmm. in the mesh. Um, one of the big things, actually, you can see here, there was a gap underneath uh, the strap and I've actually extended out the back of the strap to go to, to merge into the mesh um, and yeah so I'm just going through the, the mesh doing that and then um, here's, here's where it's been merged even more so this at this point I've decided where all the cuts are going to be because mm -hmm. we need to decide if we're going to print it we um, normally and cast it normally it will have to be broken up just to account for the you know the way it's going to be can cast. you can you rotate the other side just to see what happened with the mouth of the of the one of the characters so it's still a hole there like okay so yeah this was actually one of the really cool things about this project is that i kind of pushed it a lot mm -hmm. in terms of technique and what we could do with the printing and the casting you can print this but I wasn't sure if you could cast it, and actually, in the yeah. final cast, it's it's there. There's a hole there with the mouth and the so teeth. So, printer didn't produce any supports inside the mouth or anything. It, I think it must have, mm -hmm. or oh, it might. It probably a this few. Would, but, but this will probably be hell to clean for those who. who yeah. Who it, well, funny enough, um, this is part all part of it. You see, cleaning it and understanding how to orientate stuff mm -hmm. on the print platform so that mm -hmm. you get you don't get those horrible supports everywhere. Um, it, it's it, there's, it's another stage of the sculpting process that's just as laborious as actually sculpting. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, um, and this is kind of the first the first point that we that, you know that we have. Um, so here I made the helmet separate. So um, and then you can see it's um, mm -hmm. it just pops in. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on here? Like so. <laughs> <laughs> so there are booleans actually here. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's so, booleans going on so i'm actually if so I this, turn on this is this has some kind of click to it right uh, yes mm -hmm. yeah it just has to fit like mm -hmm. it's got to fit yeah so you mm -hmm. can see here if i just solo this head mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you can see here um and this actually fits in to the base here mm -hmm. um so i've actually had to split this whole thing off and split the helmet off the head and then this just fits on like. So I, I guess, like at this point, you ha you had to do s add some kind of a, or di or I mean, this is an interesting shape. This half uh, half mm. uh, uh, sphere. Uh, uh, I've never used that. So uh, so is it is there any tolerance needed here? Yes. It, it, it well, is. actually, yes and no. It's all about what what you want to achieve. And actually, looking back, I should have added a square or peg to it. Um, this is a bad habit of mine from miniatures because when you're making miniatures, all of the cuts you do in the joins are, um, need a lot of tolerance because what you're doing is very small. Mm -hmm. So it's quite common to have, I mean, in my miniature work, I use rounded keys mm -hmm. because but if you do a square key... What is the downside to this in, in what you do now? 
it's got more tolerance. So actually on this one, it actually does wobble a little bit, oh, really? the actual final print. And it's what I was saying to Martin when you were away getting the coffee is that I actually added too much tolerance to it. Um, so I, it would have been better to add a square key to this. But this was actually originally envisioned, envisioned as a smaller um, miniature as well. So that's kind of probably the reason why I added rounder bits to it. Um, for my bigger stuff, I'll always use a square key because if you do it right, then a lot of the time you can just dry fit stuff. You don't even need glue if you do it, yeah. do it in the right way. Um, whereas this guy needed to be resin together, I think. Um, so yeah, that that's so if I look at, um, so here you can see the keys that I've done. Actually, the, the, bo the base has got a square key. I have to uh, show you what we did uh, with our uh, mascot for the last year. Uh, uh, in the end, because we have like this rabbit uh, mascot that uh, changes faces, you know. So in the oh, end, cool. in the end, we used magnets, you know, like neo oh, cool. magnets. But uh, <clears throat> before we uh, dis decided to go for uh, with, uh, for magnets, uh, we did very interesting solution uh, for. Um, very simple solution for those faces not to fall off, you know, mm. and uh, still to be very easy replaceable. So I, I will show you that later. Oh, cool! Uh, that would that, be cool. So we have yeah. here like two, a few, a few other interesting guys. Uh, Gabriel Buitrago from uh, uh, Venezuela. He's actually originally from uh, no, he's originally from Venezuela, but he lives in Colombia, if I remember it correctly, and. Uh, we have Stephen, oh, he's a graphic designer, a really mm -hmm. good one. And mm -hmm. we have Stephen Oakley, a fantastic uh, character designer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know the guy. I'm familiar with Stephen's yeah, work. Yeah, he's he, wicked. He's yeah, great. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and let yeah. me just check if, if we have another question. Yes, Vero Gala asks another one. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I have to I have to translate this in my head. So you just continue. Uh, well, I'm g I, I just wanted to get, give you guys a quick yeah, view yeah, of yeah. like how we would go about it, just roughly. But I'll move on to something else, and then we'll let Martin have a go. Sorry, Martin. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. <laughs> this one's going to take a while to open. Um. um yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's it's definitely another craft to just print to printing as well and it's something that martin and i are learning with with our grim uh, partner brett how to print stuff how to do how to get the best out of your sculpt when you send it to a printer um because desktop printers now i mean the form form 2 is just a fantastic printer that the results you get out of it are amazing mm -hmm. um but you need to know how to orientate stuff mm -hmm. uh to, to get the right you know, to, to get the right sort of details, the level of detail that you want. Um, so it's that that's it's still it's now on a quite an important stage of sculpting. Um, this is something I wanted to. <laughs> yes, <is> bazooka. Um, <laughs> this is something I wanted to show you guys because this is a commercial sculpt that I did for Infamy Miniatures. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this was um, this was a really cool um, concept um, uh, with just like some cats like the, like a sci-fi steampunk or diesel punk cats that are robbing that they, they were on a getaway kind of motorcycle thing hover bike um, and yeah it was it was a really really fun project um, uh, before, to do. You, before you continue so yeah. the one thing that we didn't mention or at least yeah, sorry. Uh, I didn't notice it uh, the the previous cup so what was mm. the what was the like all in all uh, how much time was uh, invested in, uh, in in that project well, here's the thing. Here's the kicker. I think if you were okay, so I reckon about three weeks for the sculpt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if you were to count the pr the, the printing uh, a year. Oh shit! Oh sorry. Because uh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Marco. Um, yeah, I, it was about a year. I mean, it takes a long time, uh, and it went through several prints um, before we were happy with it. Uh, and then we finally produced it. It's got to go off to a caster, and that can take a while. And it was finally, I think we released it in October, didn't we, Martin? Something like that, or yeah, maybe November, just before Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that was a whole year since I'd done it. Okay. Um, so it takes a long time. But yeah, the sculpt, is sculpt wise, about three weeks, probably in my spare time, something like that, um, from from sculpt to final render. Um, okay, back to this. Back to this yeah. Out, watching. So just 
as with the previous skull, it's going to take ages to save this because um, it's a big file. Mm -hmm. um, this 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 is ba basically how I start. I mean, I'm quite f still a little bit further along with this. I wonder if I've got. No, I think that's it actually. Um, let me just check. No. Okay. Yeah, this is the first one I've got on the file anyway. Um, so yeah, this again, I'm blocking in, and I had a few questions a while back about how I block my my poses in. It can really vary, and actually, this is a really good example because here I've actually, I think this is the, I think this is one of the standard T pose meshes you get with ZBrush, or if not, it's a very common one. Um, and I've just cut it up into pieces and posed it up. Um, this is really just the compositional thing. So, uh, just let me ask you this: like, uh, what's the advantage of uh, for you uh, of doing it like this instead of uh, uh, doing like uh, you know like uh, it, it's posing more with mask and, uh, and it's more malleable for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it, um, if, if that's coming over, right? I mean, it's more I can change it easier. Mm -hmm. I, or I, I, it's something I find easy. I think it's personal preference. You could use a base mesh, mm -hmm. uh, I guess. Um, but I just prefer this technique, really, because um, I've always found with a base mesh, I was way too precious with it, mm -hmm. trying to maintain all the aspects of the base mesh. This way, I'm literally, I, I, I guess I could use a stick figure, and that's, I guess what I was saying is that if you look at this guy here, he is a stick figure. So it really varies how I do stuff. Um, this guy, of course, I've cut this guy up from base mesh. This guy, I actually sculpted myself into this pose and then I've added the hands the hands aren't mine um, just to give, get an idea of the hands um, and yeah it's a quick way of blocking stuff in for me um, and it, it, it's that, like, a, like I say it's that blank it's that blank page syndrome and I guess it's it's kind of a way of accepting my fallibility when it comes to stuff because I know the, the first thing that I do is not going to be good enough um, but at this stage, it doesn't matter because it's not about what it actually looks like, you know, in terms of quality of sculpt. It's about where everything goes. What, what, where's the, where's the bike in proportion to the sidecar? Where, how is this guy posed? This is, this was from a 2D drawing. So, the, the artist, although he did a very, very good job um, in conveying the idea of it, does not have to worry about the gap between the, the sidecar and the bike, what it looks like underneath, what the other side looks like, what this pose looks like from the back, that's something that you need to solve as a sculptor. That's your job um, as, a, as a collectible sculptor. Um, and uh, this, is, this is my way of being able to figure that out without getting too detailed, without worrying what the face is like. This, this is a tiger. <laughs> this is supposed to be a tiger, right? It doesn't look anything like a tiger, but it tells me what the, where the body should be on the bike. Well, the big thing for me, actually, is where, how, how far the, the, the body needed to lean forward to reach these handlebars. Because if you look, you need to line up the, the, the hands with the handlebars, right? And that's difficult. Uh, and in the end, I figured the way of doing it by turning the handles the handlebars towards the and then that way he was leaning into the bike and the pose um that's my way of being able to solve that you'll also see that there's a curve um to this figure and that's important too that's where we were saying before marco that's gesture so i envision this this sculpt like this like from the front you'd see it and then you've got this curve coming in the guy's leaning into the pose and then you've got this great line of action going through the sculpt. Um, and so that's what I'm thinking about at this stage. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I've gone a little bit further here. I've blocked in some of the shapes. Now, these are all done pretty much with Dynamesh. Um, these are symmetrical because if you're doing um, hard surface stuff, then you want it to be symmetrical. Did you use um, any, <laughs> any references in this? Uh, in this the only reference i had was the drawing i don't have that on me i'm afraid mm -hmm. but um, okay. uh, it was literally just it literally the, the the concept art was like from this angle mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. so um, i had to work out what these shapes look like in three dimensions um and uh, yeah how they tr and basically translate them um so this is like my like first stage of that um so i hope i move on um so here I think with this sculpt, I've decided to focus on the hard surface bits first um, because those are kind of 
immutable. They don't move. They 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 um, they're not moving parts as such. So that I decided on this point to focus on getting the hard surface bit done uh, and this is mostly a lot of it's kit there's a kind of a fusion of kit bash <laughs> that's stuff that's what i wanted to say please yeah. say this is kit bash it's kit bash to hell and back it really is yeah but there's also some of my own modeling in there um i think really when it comes to these sort of miniatures there's no point in reinventing the wheel because you're making work for yourself um and at this scale um you know you 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 can really, to pardon the expression, bust your balls over doing, doing some amazing kind of hard surface stuff. But at the end of the day, this is at the bottom of the miniature. And you'll see probably later that this is actually covered up by the base. Um, so you don't really want to be spending too long on it. But also you don't want to kind of, um, you want to have some nice attention to detail too. So it's a constant balance. Well, I um, mean, you still have to have a sense to, you know, assemble all of it to, to you know, like look, like something that might work you know it's got to look like it works yeah, yeah exactly um so here i've added some dynamesh bits into it and then i've kit bash from some you know you'll probably be able to find these on bad king or something like that the um for the the uh, for i think they're probably imms or something um and then i think i modeled some of these on my own uh, and then i've done a lot of dynamesh detailing around here um so yeah it's kind of a fusion of sculpting kit bashing and then so, a bit of do you use here like trim dynamic or this type of yeah brushes? a lot with this especially mm -hmm. i've used the trim dynamic mm -hmm. brush and actually so if i normally let me just go through it very quickly um, um sorry Martin. So, no uh, problem sorry, let him do he's the loving talking. it um, <laughs> i'm just i'm just sculpting the background seriously <laughs> Um, so here to create that, I'd use the Dyna, uh, um, a Damien standard brush, create, and this would be symmetrical. But of course, I can't actually turn symmetry on on this at the moment. Um, and then I would cut in, and then I'd I'd actually Dynamesh it to get and with polish switched on, and then it would create this nice polish. And then I'd use Trim Dynamic to come in and polish it up and follow the form, um, and then gradually build up the forms and. So trim dynamic for this. You can see it's kind of loose and low resolution as it is now, actually. But I've got some nice shapes with it. I'm using just using trim dynamic to find the edges. So then would you apply, apply like a smooth uh, normals or something like this? Uh, so, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Um, smooth by normals or what, what is it called? Well, you do polish. Um, ah, okay, so okay. This, I, I'm, this was actually before Sculptures Pro, I think. Might have been. Maybe after. I can't remember. Um... So I'm using Dynamesh with polish switched on, uh, and that will give you this nice kind of look. So I could do some really rough stuff on there, but if I re-Dynamesh it, it will actually be, it should polish it up. I don't, I've turned it off. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see it polishes it over. Um, you can also do this with the clay polish brush as well. Mm -hmm. that, oh, that yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite trick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And then actually, I don't know if people realise, but that marks out some of your stuff as well. Oh, so yeah. it can see it marks some of the edges, mm -hmm. um, which can be quite useful. There's also a cool function um, that you can also use the polish thing. Uh, uh, I don't know if you use like group by normals, and then I don't. I've heard of people using that, and it sounds yeah, that's, pretty. That's, that's cool. gonna be like a really cool trick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move yeah. on. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, this stage I'm still blocking stuff in uh, to, in terms of the carrots, but I'm actually trying to get a final idea of the de rough, a, a medium level of detail on the on the bikes. Um, and these are just things I've saved out, so um, they're not it's not precise, but it just just to give you guys an idea. So at this stage now I'm adding I'm adding the the, the characters and stuff, and I'm sculpting in to the character. No, so now I'm getting a good feel for stuff. Um, you'll notice as well that. It's still kind of on a plane. It's still on a flat plane, and I've kept the bike symmetrical at this stage. But then I'm sculpting the characters into pose on the bikes. So I'm using what I've established here as a base, and then extracting out clothes, and then sculpting into them, um, uh, and then sort of getting an idea for the folds and stuff. So for the folds, I'm using... Um, I use a little brush called SK cloth, so you can have to. You, um, I don't. I can't remember where I got it from. I think it's from a Japanese sculptor. 
Um, but it, I think it's just a standard brush with a bit of gravity um, applied. Um, and you just, you know, you can just create these lovely um, folds. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you just, I think with, with folds, you just need to study um, basically drapery and get an idea for it. And then once you've studied it for a bit, you'll start to pick up how it behaves. Uh, and so that's that's kind of what I do with this. I um, kind of sculpt in the, the, the drapery. I sculpt it into pose. I wanted this lovely flowing leather jacket sort of effect out the back um, because it just to convey the movement. Because this piece is all about forward movement, really. Um, so it was really important to convey that in the tiger's fur, the jacket, uh, uh, this this guy's fur as well, and then you'll see later the rocket launcher. Um, and so yeah, I'm I'm just working through. I did the the helmet individually, um, so I've got that actually here. So this was I've got the tiger head. Yeah, so I actually sculpted this is symmetrical this tiger head. So I I sculpted this independently, um, and symmetrically did did all the um, head uh, the helmet, and then I'll merge that together. And then I actually go back in and then put it onto the sculpt and then start to sculpt it again asymmetrically. So that's what's going on here. Um, I'm also starting to work out where the hands are. And I've started the trousers as well. Um, the big problem for me on this piece was where, where his legs are. So I was trying to figure out what his legs are doing because, on, of course, on a bike, there's a platform or there's something to put somewhere to put your feet. Whereas on the concept, I couldn't see these feet at all. So I had to make that up. Um, so I had a bit of problems trying to concept that out. So even if you've got a concept, you're actually still doing the concept, which is quite um, ironic, really. Um, um, I'm moving on. I'm going to move on quickly because I want to uh, give mine. I just want to say hello to uh, another great artist who's here with us, uh, Damir G. Martin. This guy does amazing uh, dinosaurs, and uh, you should oh, check wow, his okay. portfolio. Yeah, uh, I'll, we'll paste, it, yeah, I'll paste it here uh, in the chat so others can visit him as well. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. So, uh, again, I moved on again here. Um, I, I, I guess I, I'm a little bit of a scatterbrain when it comes to sculpts. Like, I, I'm not very methodical So in some ways. So you can see I've added more detail to the bike, and then I've moved on to the, to the, the other cat, and then I've moved on back onto the bike again. Um, it's whatever kind of takes my fancy at the time, but there, there's always progress going on on the sculpts. So um, here you can see I've added the, the, the secondary character. Again, I'm using that brush that I showed you to, to create the nice folds. Um, and then I'm adding the tube as a placeholder for the uh, rocket. And then you can see I've kind of tried to convey the movement in his hair and his ears because his ears are kind of pointed backwards. Um, and, um, yeah, just trying to get the, everything established. Now, I think we're now at this stage where we were before in the previous sculpt where I've got everything that I want roughly there. So now it's all about the detail and figuring the minute detail stuff out. Um, oh, Brett Riley is here as well. <laughs> oh, great. Hello, Brett. Um, yeah, so we, it's just the case of I'm just I, I'm, at, I'm kind of over the hump again, like I said last time with this. And now it's just a case of, well, of course, during this process, I'm also showing the client as well. Uh, and normally I will show the client at this stage and then probably at... Um, Oh, that's the final one. That'll take ages. Sorry. Um, normally, at the, just the last the stage that we were just at. So that's the final goal. But um, normally, around this stage, I'll be showing the client again. And then normally, that's enough to show a client, and they'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, that's great." And or, "Can you change this? Or can you change that?" Um, depending that's on most how. Most of the times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so then it's just a case of dialing in the detail, figuring out all the little, you know, attention to detail sort of stuff, really. Um, and I don't know if that's, yeah, so if the, that's the cat's head that I did, and that's symmetrical again, similar to the tiger's head, uh, done symmetrically, and then that'll be popped on the body, and then I'll, I'll sculpt into it again. Uh, and then I've got the rocket launcher as well, that was something I modelled. And again, I'm not too worried about detail here i'm using some alphas here i think these are jonas ronegaard's al alphas actually uh, i'm using on here um but this is going to be tiny on the model so it's got a you know most of the stuff you do has got a 
register. Um, so you don't really want to go too detailed. I probably made that a bit too detailed, but uh, as long as you don't go too overboard, you're okay. Um, and then it all comes together. Um, I'll just show you guys. This is the now this is the final sculpt. And this is so. I guess one of the questions people ask is how big is it? Well, it's 130 million polygons, so it's massive. Jesus. Um, well, it everything was a, in one file, right? Everything in one file. As you can see, I'm on a pretty good Intel PC, and you, uh, well, you might not be able to tell because of the slight lag you get on YouTube, but this is lagging. Uh, it's not YouTube that's doing this; it's the sculpt. <laughs> um, it is super laggy. Um, so I mean, you you haven't thought to like of maybe you know decimating something uh, during the process, yeah, you know, and then I like. I think uh, I actually, I think I did. So what I did is I decimated bits, and then I think I must have added them back in later because I'd over decimated or something. But I think at this stage, um, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if there are even some decimated bits uh, in it. Uh, I, mean, I, think I, I like good. this piece. It has a lot of humor in it, you know. So yeah, uh, I, I kind of hope that one 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 day you'll decide to do like Re Rodney and Delboy from uh, uh, from the <laughs> <laughs> full, I'd love to. <laughs> full, what what was the name of the show? Uh, Only fools and horses. Only fools and horses. Did you <laughs> see the one where they're dressed as Batman and Robin? Oh yeah, I've seen all of them. <laughs> ten, ten times, I think. You know, so. that was my favorite. Yeah, um, yeah I'd love to do them as a sculpt of them as Batman and Robin. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on. Yeah, so, well, here you go. I mean, I decided to do this, this sort of cache flying out the back, um, which was fun. But, of course, I had to engineer all this to get it to work in the print. So that was a nightmare. But you can see it's all merged together, and it did actually print quite well, apparently. So um, uh, I managed to solve that. So th there's a lot of forward movement in this piece. And, of course, I did the base. So if we look underneath, you can see that's where... Um, like, of course, it's obscured part of the, the bottom of the bike um, because, of course, at the end of the day, this has got to be a physical object. It's got weight to it. Um, so it's got to stand up. So I've got to think about how it's going to stand on the table. Um, that's really important. Um, but as you can see, it's now at an angle as well. There's, you've got this lovely, um, you know, arc of movement. Um, so, yeah, this was the final piece. And I, wonder, I don't know if I've got, this engineered actually um, let me just find it yeah I think here's the engineer piece so again the same process as Bluebeard I mentioned this is a miniature so there are a lot of cylindrical uh, spherical um, keys um, and I broke off uh, I actually actually had to put the um, legs in two bits uh, there's the head and then there's the scarf and then there's a body. There were a lot of bits to this. <laughs> and then I did the handlebars. They're all merged. Um, and then the main bike was, that's just one piece. And then, you know, so you can see it was a big project to take apart. Um, and you can see here, I actually had to take off the this cache here. So this is a separate bit. Uh, and then that pops in. Funny enough, that doesn't have a key, but with a miniature, as long as you have a depression that it fits into, people tend to glue stuff together anyway. So, you know, they, they tend to do your job for you a little bit. I try not to be too lazy, but um, sometimes when you've got a piece that you're not quite sure of, um, that's the best solution. Um, so, yeah, that's, that, that's basically a miniature. Um, and this is decimated, so it's only decimated, so it's only 3 million polys. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've gone from 130 to 3 million in, in the um, engineering. So how big is this in reality? This is 75 millimeter tall, I think, something like that. It's tiny. Yeah, it's, uh, really, it's really not big. It's not big at all, but funny enough, nowadays the, with miniatures, you'll pick up every single little detail. Um, it really does. Um, so everything, I've seen the print actually, everything that, that I've done in here has been picked up on the print. So it's that good these days. Um, I've also been very lucky to work with some very good commercial printers that, that do a really great job, and casters as well. Um, cool. Yeah. So uh, shall we move now to Martin? I think that would be best. The best. <laughs> oh, I was going to leave. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you five minutes. Sorry, man. mate. <laughs> uh, so uh, just a second uh, before you take over the uh, the screen, uh, I'll uh, pu put uh, the, the that uh, screen saver uh, because uh, 
yeah well uh, <laughs> because of the ratio and everything so let's <laughs> let's let's just uh, do this and uh, I don't. Uh, what, what was the resolution? I forgot of your uh, device. Can you remind me, Martin? 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 Uh huh. Okay. You you can start sharing now, and let's see what happens. Not yet. I still see. Uh, I still see James. But let's see. So you have shared. Okay, I don't see this. Just a second. Sorry for a second back in the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's see. Don't yeah. need to stop sharing my screen. Oh, uh, I think it stops. Yeah, I'm not sharing the anymore. I don't think, or at least it's not highlighted. Yeah, well, you know, let's let's see what's going on here. This will take probably 30 seconds or so. 